morning and welcome to the Planning Hearing Officer's Hearing for March 5th, 2014. My name is Laura Stotler and I will be serving today as the Hearing Officer. We have two cases on the agenda today and the relevant exhibits are posted on the panels located directly behind me. The agenda, staff reports, and recommendation for each of today's cases can be found on the City's website. A copy of the hearing procedures are available on the counter by the, by the door and next to a copy of the agendas are copies of the staff reports. Under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.42 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a conditional use permit shall be granted if four required findings are present. For applications involving the sale, serving, or consumption of alcoholic beverages, there are an additional five criteria that must be considered in making the four required findings in granting the CUP. Applications for parking reduction permits shall meet the procedures and criteria set forth in Section 30.32.70. 0.070A and Table 30.32B with qualifying project features and a discussion of all of these findings is included in the staff reports for these projects. If the evidence presented in the application and at the hearing meets the criteria, then the planning hearing officer can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the case in question. If the findings of fact are not evident, then the request will be denied. Notification of these hearings was accomplished by the use of public notices which were mailed to property owners and occupants located within 500 feet of the subject property. They were physically posted on the site in question and placed in the local newspaper and they were also posted on the city's website. Hearings will proceed as follows. First I'll read a description of the requested entitlements. The case planner will then make a brief overview of the case, give an analysis and make a recommendation. The applicant will then be asked to come forward, stating both name and address, and will be asked to present the case within a 15-minute time limit. Others in, others in support of or in opposition to the application and interest in parties will be asked to come forward to speak, stating both name and address with a three-minute time limit. Lastly, the applicant will be given the opportunity to make closing comments if desired in response to testimonies given by preceding speakers within a five-minute time limit. The hearing will be closed and the case will be taken under submission. After the hearing, the decision will be prepared in writing and will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and to all persons who have responded to the public notice, either by speaking today at this meeting or who have written or provided their name and mailing address. The date of the decision will be the date appearing on the letter. However, if a decision is made at this hearing, the decision date will be today's date and a 15-day appeal period will start today. Under the appeal provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.62 of the Glendale Municipal Code, the decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within 15 days of the date of the decision. Anyone wishing to appeal may obtain forms and brochures on the procedures for appeal from the Permit Services Center located in Room 101 of this building. So anyone wishing to speak, um, would you please fill out one of these cards and I'll be happy to call you up when your item is, is um, being heard. I would like to also inform everyone that the official proceedings of the, the hearing are being recorded as part of the public record. So for the first case, um, I have a, a conditional use permit, PCUP 132864, located at 241 North Central Avenue, Hamburger Central. Um, they have submitted a request that this item be continued to a date certain. They're asking that this item be continued to March 26, 2014. And so I am now continuing that item to a date certain, March 26, 2014, without further public notice. Um, the second item we have on the hearing is located at 109 East Harvard Street. This is a conditional use permit, PCUP 139136, and also parking reduction permit, case number 132815. The applicant is Garo Nazarian of Domus Design. Case planner is Milka Toledo. This is an application for a conditional use permit and a parking reduction permit to allow the sales, service, and on-site consumption of all types of alcoholic beverages at an existing banquet hall that is proposing to expand their seating serving area without providing the required number of parking spaces for the expansion located at 109 East Harvard Street in the downtown specific plan Maryland Arts and Entertainment District described as lots 4, 5, 6, 7 and block of block 57 Campbell and Thompson track. And with that, I would like to ask the case planner to do an overview. 
Yes, thank you, Ms. Stotler. As you stated, this project uh, is requesting a conditional use permit and a parking reduction permit to allow the sales, service, and on-site consumption of all types of alcoholic beverages at the existing banquet hall that is proposing to expand their seating area by 1,152 square feet onto a outdoor deck on the second floor without providing the required number of additional parking spaces for that expansion of that outdoor deck only. So that, again, additional area, because this is a banquet hall, the code requirement for parking is to park the area that is for seating purposes of the banquet area only. The project is located in the DSP in the Downtown Specific Plan, the Maryland Arts and Entertainment District. The site is developed with two buildings, including the subject three-story commercial building, which I will reference as Building A, so we can identify that the one, the building on the west is identified as Building A, the building on the east side is identified as Building B. The building where the banquet hall is located is Building A, which is on the west side, bounded by Brand Boulevard to the west and Harvard to the south, and on the far east, Building B is bounded by Maryland Avenue. The location of the banquet is on the second floor, and the specifically the expansion is located. I'll, I'll approach the the uh, panel so that I can reference it and for the public to know. The location of the expansion for the outdoor banquet, uh, excuse me, outdoor uh, covered patio or deck will be in this area right in here which is located between the two buildings and this is basically like some sort of loading and area where they have trash that's not a, that's not parking that's not where people sit or anything like that or there's no tenant spaces in that area so it doesn't conflict how are they going to cover the outdoor area is it going to be tents or no, Brothers. that area does, actually it's already there. It was actually an outdoor, I want to say it's. it was already more like an outdoor deck, but I guess used for storage or something like that. But now it's, it, it already has a roof on it. So it, it doesn't need a tent or anything like that. It's already covered with an actual roof structure on it. As far as the surrounding uses, uh, specifically for this location, there are restaurants on the ground floor and retail spaces, cigar lounge, there's office spaces on the third floor, and there are on the, on the next building over, Building B, there are personal services like a beauty salon, a bakery, a wine bar, and there's a vacant tenant space. So we can see that there are different types of mixed types of commercial uses already existing there and again this is located in the downtown specific plan where you will find different types of entertainment uses where whether it's the Americana at brand which we know has a lot of mixed use development with restaurants which also serve alcohol and there's also um, the the Glendale marketplace which is literally right next door to this subject property and uh, they also have different types of retail tenant space and restaurants. And again, being restaurants, they will always have the, typically ancillary service of alcoholic beverages. So going, would you like me to go to the findings for this conditional use permit, and then I'll jump over to the parking reduction section? Oh, yes, please. Okay. So briefly, as far as the um, findings are concerned, the banquet hall use, the sales, service, and on-site on consumption of alcoholic beverages is consistent with the elements and objectives of the general plan. Uh, again, the land use designation is DSP for this site. And one of the purposes of the, this designation is to encourage the location of a wide range of activities and to maintain this type of dynamic environment in the downtown area. So a bank, the banquet hall is located, again, on the second floor, and existing restaurants and retail uses are on the ground floor, which is consistent with the intent of the DSP to have service, restaurants, and pedestrian-oriented types of activities on the ground floor. And again, this particular use is on the second floor. 
So serving a help of alcoholic beverages in conjunction with the meals served during private functions is common ancillary use for a banquet hall and will further assist in making the downtown uh, Glendale a dynamic destination. Before I continue, I would like to highlight um, comments. Comments received by other city sections. Neighborhood services did not have or cite any issues with this proposal. And traffic division did not have any issues related to this proposal. The only comment that they had was, um, first of all, they said that they believe that they have the capacity at the Glendale Market uh, excuse me, the, the capacity at the Glendale Marketplace parking structure is is adequate for the proposal and also they they noted that they would prefer that valet not be a requirement for this application. So those were their the only comment that they had. Okay. And comments made out by the police department I will highlight further in the in my report but no major issues regarding this proposal as well okay we did receive letters and you didn't make a comment with about that already so I will continue in my presentation as far as the finding to the proposal will not be detriment detrimental to the safety and public welfare of the neighborhood in general again as stated uh, the proposal is to continue the operation of the banquet hall and ancillary service of alcoholic beverages and to expand the seating serving area onto the new outdoor deck which should not adversely impact any nearby uses on this commercial street nor impede the development of surrounding properties since the prop these properties already are developed given the commercial nature of the area and the, con the continued operation of the banquet hall and the uh, ancillary service of alcoholic beverages would not adversely impact the surrounding uses in the area. There already exist mixed uh, multifamily mixed uses, mixed use residences located on Brand Boulevard across the street to the west from the subject site at the Americana at Brand, and they would not be impacted since the banquet hall use has existed prior to the residential unit. In addition, the expanded seating area is located at the far east of the building at the furthest point away from the residential uses. According to the Glendale Police Department, the Banquet Hall facility is located in Census Track 3022.01, where the suggested limit is three on-sale establishments. Currently, there are 22 on-sale licenses in this tract, including the subject Banquet Hall. While there are significantly more on-sale establishments in this area than would be allowed, LA Banquets, or the subject Banquet Hall, is already one of the existing 22 establishment. So therefore the new CUP request is required only as a result of the modified conditions of approval to the existing CUP and to allow the expansion of the banquet hall seating area. As far as uh, crimes, based on part one, part one crime statistics for the census tract in 2012, there were 89 crimes, which is 48 percent above the citywide average of 60. And while this area has more crime than any other areas, it may be attributed to the high concentration of the retail uses that currently already exist. And we're very, again, we're close to um, the shopping mall and also their entertainment uses nearby. So all of that is accounted for. But again, the police department did not cite any concerns specifically related to this pr proposal. And as far as any calls, there were just four calls for service at this location but within the last calendar year but none of them resu resulted in reports being taken and they were not calls directly related to the use or the sales the service or on-site consumption of alcoholic beverages so again neither the police department nor neighborhood services cited any concerns regarding this entitlement and lastly, the last um, finding for the CUP, how the proposed on-site consumption of alcoholic beverages will not adversely affect or conflict with the adjacent uses or impede normal development. Again, the project site is located in a commercial area. The streets already are um, in a densely developed commercial area containing restaurants, offices, and mixed-use development surrounding the project site. 
So therefore, the, the proposed expansion of this banquet hall will not conflict with the adjacent surrounding uses. Now, regarding the parking reduction, the project site is access to, well, let's start with the, the access to the banquet hall is from the ground floor lobby on Harvard Street. The floor plan submitted shows that the existing total floor area for the banquet hall is 12,295 square feet and the seating area is 6,720 square feet. The proposed expansion of the seating area onto the new deck will be 1,152 square feet. The deck expansion only will require 33 additional parking spaces based on the following calculations. 28.6 spaces, parking spaces, per 1,000 square feet of the new 1,152 square foot seating area only. So that's why only 33 spaces are required just for that area alone of the expansion. Now, there are no on-site parking spaces, however, this area or this specific building does have an existing covenant and agreement between the property owner and the city to allow businesses located at 142 through 156 South Brand Boulevard and 145 South Maryland Avenue to park at the Glendale Marketplace parking structure, which is located on the northeast corner of Maryland Avenue and Harvard Street, just east of the site. So many years ago when this site was developed and the Glendale Marketing uh, Glendale Marketplace parking structure, the concept was shared parking. And that's, in, that's exactly what they're doing. They are part of the site, which is, I just identified in this address, which they are allowed, based on the covenant, and based on years ago when it was established, and it's been uh, carried forward for, the, for a couple decades now, to utilize shared parking at the Glendale Marketplace parking structure. Now, as far as availability of parking of the parking structure, well, I did a, uh, some research and I had the Traffic and Transportation Division provide some parking inventory for the Glendale Marketplace parking structure. And the most recent that I obtained at the time when I was processing the application, it was noted that the structure has approximately 1,077 parking spaces. And some of the hours that I, I noted in the report as far as inventory, according to the report dated November 2013, during lunch peak hours from 12 to 2, there was approximately 500 spaces occupied on Fridays and approximately 530 spaces occupied Saturdays and Sundays. During dinner peak hours from 6 to 8 p.m., there were approximately 600 spaces occupied Fridays between um, between Fridays and between five to six hundred spaces, excuse me, occupied on Saturdays and Sundays. The report showed that the highest number of occupied spaces during weekday lunch peak hours was 703 spaces and 744 spaces occupied during dinner peak hours. So in summary, the parking occupancy report sh demonstrates that there is adequate parking supply in the Glendale Marketplace parking structure. Again, out of 1,077 parking spaces, the, the amount of occupied spaces at the highest, at its peak, was 744. So clearly, it demonstrates that the it, the marketplace parking structure can more than accommodate the forecast peak parking demands for the expanded banquet hall. And again, we all know that banquet halls operate only during certain times. It's not like a restaurant. It's when there's an event. And it's for a certain amount of hours allocated for that specific event. And lastly, I would like to also note that in addition to the parking structure. There's also a parking lot, city public parking lot, parking lot number 10 with three hour parking which is located across the street next to the central library 
and there is on-site, um, excuse me, on-street parking along Grand Boulevard and Harvard Street. Now going back to um, traffic's comment regarding valet service. Valet service, according to the applicant, is an option for their patrons. It's, it's not required, but that is available for those who wish to have valet service. If not, the patron can self-park on their own. And again, there are, as I noted, at, at the parking structure or any other area, public on the street or on the parking lot, across the street where they prefer. For these reasons, staff believes that all four findings for both this, the conditional use permit and the parking reduction request can be made in a positive manner, and therefore we, all re we are recommending approval. And I've included draft findings and conditions of approval for both the CUP and the parking reduction permit. The com or conditions presented by the police department were also most most of them incorporated in the conditions of a of approval that I drafted. And if there are any other questions, I am available. But that would conclude my presentation. Okay, no, thanks. I don't have any additional questions at this time, but I will have some for the applicant. Um, and before I call the applicant forward, I would like to acknowledge that we've received many emails um, yesterday and this morning. So I do quickly want to go through them just so the public knows that we have received them and I will be considering them. Um, we received um, emails from Brock Hill. Um, he's concerned about the city granting a parking reduction permit um, because it says the area has a lot of traffic congestion and parking is difficult. So he's encouraging denial of that, their parking reduction permit. Um, we've received an email from Susan Bolin, um, similar uh, concerns with a parking reduction request for 33 spaces uh, to zero. She's concerned with that, um, given that this area is, has heavy uh, commercial and retail uses. We received an email from Jennifer Pinkerton. Um, she's also opposed to the parking reduction of 33 spaces. Um, she's concerned that it's hard to find parking when she goes, or it's congested when she drives to the parking to the library. Um, is concerned that there won't be adequate parking in the area, and she's also concerned with the valet parking because that she says that impedes traffic. And we have an email from Bill Nicole. Um, he is also concerned with the traffic generation, traffic congestion in the area, and uh, is concerned that there is not enough parking in the area, concerned with access into and out of the Americana, and would this affect that, and is also um, has an objection to the parking reduction permit. I have an email from another one from Bill Nicole. Uh, same comments. Received a comment from Uta Baum, concerned that 33 parking spaces is too short, that they need more parking. Received a comment from Tom Stapleton. He is also concerned with the parking reduction permit. So far I haven't seen a comment about the alcohol, but it seems like the, the parking reduction is the concern. We received an email from Albert Hoffman, and he is um, also opposed to the project, but he doesn't say why. Oh, yes, he does. Sorry, read further. He's, it's the parking reduction permit, the reduction of 33 spaces. Um, Grant Michaels also wrote an email. And he's also concerned with a parking reduction permit. It looks like we did have some emails that went directly to the city manager's office. Um, so this is from Mr. and Mrs. Francis Jennings. And they are opposed to banquet halls and to parking reduction permits. 
received also another letter that went to the city manager's office. It appears it went to Randy from Rondi Warner, and she is also opposed to the parking reduction permit um, and the conditional use permit. And we have a letter also from Richard and Carol Lee. And they are also, they are concerned with the parking reduction permit. And again, all of these are similar in that they oppose the 33 space reduction. We've also received uh, Claudia Culling. She has also written us and she is um, opposed to the parking reduction permit. And that's all the comments that I see from the public. I just wanted to make um, the applicant aware of that. Maybe you can address some of those comments uh, in your presentation. I would like to call forward then the applicant, Garo Nazarian. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Garo Nazarian with Domus Design 109 East Harvard, uh, Unit 306. As the project, it has been presented by the Milka uh, for the CUP, that this is an existing uh, banquet hall operating, and because of the uh, business owner's choice to provide better service to his customers, because the existing elevator is not a gurney type, it's a small one, to provide accessibility to the second floor with uh, wheelchair people, they decided to add this new elevator, new lobby, to provide gurney type, the handicap uh, requirement uh, size elevator to give easy access even for the disabled people. This uh, project is located in the downtown specific plan and the Maryland Entertainment District, which it's this uses, it's encouraged by the city because this uses, right now this intersection after the Americana construction, Americana plant, it become the most important intersection uh, for the entertainment and uh, nightlife uh, for the city, which creates it's a big, uh, you know, taxes, you know, sales taxes for the city. So the um, project, the proposed uh, requested CUP, it's a consistent with the general plan and all the elements of the you know, uh, city. Uh, the entire area, it has fully developed, so the future development, it won't be, you know, necessarily disturbed by this project. And uh, the ex uh, just the expansion pushed us you know, to file the new COP to comply with the previous condition. And looking to the other banquet halls, this it's a very you know big improvement even for the city, because looking to the other banquet halls where there is no outdoor space, usually the uh, customers of that banquet hall. Just to go to outside, what they do, they walk in the public right of way, they stand in the front of the building. But by having this outdoor space, which in reality we, does, we don't increase the number of the seats or the number, you know, by the code we calculated the occupant load for this outdoor space. But the event, it's usually it's running inside. Just the people that they get tired, you know, just they want to have 10 minute relaxation time because of the music or whatever. Instead of the walking in the street, they go to a private outdoor space, which as you see on the plan, it's in the back of the building. It's kind of isolated area, which doesn't have any effect to anybody in the area. For the CUP, you know, the use of the alcoholic beverages is a very customary, you know, service that uh, these businesses provided for their patrons. Uh, and uh, the proposed, you know, requested CUP, it's fully in compliance with the city ordinances and the general plan, everything. For the parking reduction, as I mentioned, this outdoor space will be used by the same patrons that they are inside for having the event. 
But anyway, by counting that 33 parking spaces and the peak hours, which are usually 7 p.m. to 11 uh, to 2, 2, PM, uh, 2 a.m., uh, we have to take in consideration this is a mixed-use mixed use building. We have offices, we have retail, we have restaurants. The restaurants, they operate till 10, 10.30. But the offices, which my office is located in the same building, the latest that we leave the office, it's 6, 6.30. Max, if really we, are, we will be very busy, I will stay there till 7. All offices, they are closed at 7. One thing that we didn't mention here, that use, uh, having the shared parking, when the offices, they leave, the parkings that counted toward the office spaces, it will become available for the banquet hall. And again, uh, the, the same thing with the retail. The retail stores that we have there, you know, they close at 6.30, 7. It's a gift shop, uh, which they close usually by 7 o'clock. Again, the parking uh, counted toward that retail, it comes available to um, banquet hall. And uh, the, another consideration, uh, as I told my office is there, I know the area very well. The parking spaces available, it's much higher than it's needed. Right now, the marketplace parking structure, the lowest two level, it has been rented out to auto the dealershipers in the South Brand, which they use as a storage. That two level parking spaces, even right now, it's occupied, I think it's the Nissan of Glendale, which I don't know, maybe 200 cars they are using as a storage. So the parking space, it's available always. And as mentioned, the valet parking is not a requirement, but it's provided as a, you know additional service option to the you know customers that they come to the place. They can park by, by themselves, self-park, or to use the valet parking. And uh, the area between of the buildings that it's kind of loading uh, uh, loading area, it helps for the valley operation too. That that creates a traffic is not, you know, true, because by you have, using that the spaces they pick the cars and they valet to the uh, parking structure. And. Uh, I had a meeting with the police lieutenant that was reviewing the case. He came, we walked through the job site, and as Milka mentioned, he has no concern. Just we talked, he talked about the security cameras that they want us to install on this open, the entire building already is covered with the security cameras and we are adding the new one on this open deck area. So that is not a problem. I did review, uh, I did review the, the conditions of approval suggested. Uh, I don't see any problem with that, and even the owner is here, I think that you will have any Oh, okay. Okay, they will talk about the conditions. Okay. Um, if you have any more questions, I will be happy to answer it. Are you proposing to make any changes to the exterior outdoor area where the, the patio is? Because it looks like part of it's covered, but part of it is open. No, the Hold okay on. on the presentation, I know it's called that the area it's covered by the roof. It is not. Mm. This, this new addition, the original very small area of the outdoor patio, it was covered by a roof, corrugated uh, metal roof. But this new one, it's not covered. But we have the option to file for, you know, just a canopy, retractable canopies to cover it or not. But right now it's not covered. Okay, so but you may be putting on a retractable canopy. Or a, okay. Yeah, I'm just concerned that if you do cover it, that it looked like it's part of the building. I would, I wouldn't want it to look um, like you just put something that was a fly-by-night. This is a permanent building in our downtown. We wanted to make sure whatever you would put in would be something that would be um, compatible. Of course, the 
that is the same concern of the landlord and the business owner. You know, because really this is one of the primary buildings in the area. We are not going to do any Mickey Mouse job on this building because really we are proud of this building. And this new improvement, new addition, it gives more appearance, you know, good look. Uh, previously that loading area, it was just kind of the dark, ugly space. Now with this new addition, it become more dynamic, more representable the space for, you know, area for the building, yes. Okay. Um, those are the only questions I have other than the fact that you have been using, you have no parkings at all. I'm no. correcting. So no. the, this whole building was, was built to share parking with the city garage. So I'm just stating that um, for the, some of the people in the audience as well as the people who maybe watching on television who can't see the plans I mean, who've written emails I just want to make that really clear that this business has been active for many years it's never had parking on the site none of the businesses in that building have had parking on the site so I just and the one thing that, that I want to add just for your information when uh, this uh, building it was you know under the renovation in that time that uh, the landlord signed the agreement with the city he participated financially you know in that time they calculated how many parking spaces is required for these users and they charged so much to each parking space and the landlord participated financially on the construction of this parking structure. Okay. And then I do have one more question too about the valet parking. Do you obtain a permit from the city's uh, traffic and transportation whenever you want to have a special event or do you have an ongoing agreement with them? We are uh, we, we are having an ongoing agreement with the city. Yes. All right. Okay. Okay. And uh, the other item that I want to, you know, that uh, that is maybe non, not necessarily that on the comments I read that how we can uh, reinforce that the employees, they don't park on site. On site there is no parking. Every, and the business owner is providing monthly passes for his employees. They are using the parking structure as a just a regular uh, business uh, employees of the area by having the monthly passes, which they pay additional fee for these uh, uh, monthly passes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. And I'd like to call forward uh, Marco Brambilla. Uh, unfortunately, Marco Brambilla, because of the medical issues he had to leave so he left his speech with me which I'm going to read on his behalf okay Marco Brambilla 109 East Harvard Suite 306 Glendale I'm hereby addressing the city regarding this matter to support the above project Due to the urgent appointment with the doctor, I cannot be here in person, but I strongly feel that, I, uh, that uh, the approval of this application is the right thing to do and is good for the city. The owner of the business have four similar businesses and their uh, reputation for high quality and fa family oriented organized functions precedes them for many years. They are truly active and caring members of our community and participate and support several non-profit organizations, including the restructured Alex Theater. The only reason for filing this CUP is because of the uh, newly added uh, open deck and the uh, elevator lobby. Uh, which these uh, additions only enhance their co commitment to higher standard and continuous improvement of their operation. Neither the new elevator nor the open deck was required by law, but as the existing elevator is not handicapped and or gurney accessible, it was decided to install it at a considerable cost in order to provide more safety and comfort for all the patrons. The addition of the open deck is also voluntary and is designed um, being used by the same people who are already in the banquet hall as an outdoor area. The business is located in a zone specific, specific, 
specifically created to encourage similar users. For the last 20 years or so, this location has continued the same use and the same business under separate ownership. And now it's being organized by one of the most well-known operators of their kind in Southern California. The continuous success and the operation of this business in Glendale is not only desirable, it is uh, certainly to the advantage of the city and the neighborhood in general. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call forward Mimo Bar Barogian. Mimo Barogian. I'm Barogian. the owner of the building. I'm for the project to be approved. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And then I'd like to call forward Vrej Sarkissian, followed by Damon Wallace. Good morning. Hello. I'm the operator okay. of the business. I'd like to thank uh, you, Ms. Toddler, Ms. Toledo. Thank you for all your work today. Uh, I have to say that I am very proud of this project. I think uh, the way it was designed, the expansion of it, we anticipated a lot of the concerns for the city, and I think we met those concerns in the planning of it. So I'd like to say thank you to everybody involved. Um, there is one, con there's two conditions that I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay. Point number 12, uh, that all music, lighting, etc. cetera. Um, I think point number 12 is already addressed in the code, and I think it's further uh, addressed in the conditions number 10 and number 17. Um, I really think uh, it's just extra. If we can uh, delete the requirement number 12, again, I think all the other concerns have been met through other parts of the requirements and the code itself, which has noise ordinances, sound ordinances, etc., for that zone. Additionally, um, point number 28, a minimum of two security guards um, and one banquet manager. Um, for there to always be at least two security guards. Um, I think that's a little too much. Um, I think we'd like the flexibility to offer up security services based on the texture of the events and the number of guests. Um, additionally, the security service that we utilize currently also has contracts with uh, adjoining businesses. So anytime there's any issues, um, there's more than one readily available. Um, so uh, between those two points, uh, uh, like I said, I'm very, very proud of the project. Um, I did hear a lot of people talking I and mean, me sending emails uh, really about the 33 additional spaces. And uh, the architect, I think, addressed it. But I'd like to say, to say one more thing and probably point this out to the people that don't know. Um, the additional square footage doesn't really allow us to have any extra guests. Really, because you're not going to be able to seat these extra guests uh, all at the same time, both outside on the deck and inside. It just doesn't work that way. So there isn't any number of extra cars that are coming through to the space. Um, additionally, they talk about uh, congestion. I think we did a real good job with creating this deck and taking congestion away from the sidewalks, away from the city. People want to go out and have a, have a smoke. Uh, they go outside to the deck and do so. They don't necessarily have to go out to the sidewalk. So. Um, in terms of congestion, I think we've also alleviated that, not added to it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right, guys. And next, Damon Wallace, followed by John Kosimba. My name is Damon Wallace. I'm working at uh, LA Banquets at 109 East Harvard, and I'm in favor of this. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. And John Kosimba. Um, I'm a resident that uses the library on occasion. Um, quite often there's meetings at the library, and this is quite close to that. And parking is always difficult at the library. There's supposedly the 22 spaces next to the library, which are not controlled, rarely available because they're being used. Um, there's meetings by the State Board of Equalization. There's meetings by the Historical Society. There's meetings by, um, you know, various lots of people that use use the meeting rooms of the library. Trying to get parking for those is always, always difficult. And they're sort of ad hoc like these... Um, meetings they're planning or these dinners they're planning at the uh, at the site <clears throat> um, using the the parking facility the, the library gives free validations to use the, the big parking structure but if that's being all used up then that takes away again from service at the library so that's another concern um, now is this I'm sorry I didn't arrive for the beginning of the meeting does this include 
this outside deck, is this just for smoking or is it going to be include a, a bar and service and tables? Is, are they expanding their business, in other words? Okay. Is there any, if they are? We'll, we'll let the applicant address that okay. during rebuttal. That would be a... That would be a that would be a problem because if you're expanding your service and um, there's already a parking problem down in that area, that would be a problem. It, it um, is part of the banquet hall. Yes, I know that would be part of the banquet hall. But is it expanding their service though? Is beyond being a smoking area? That's my question. Okay. Okay. Now um, we have a couple other businesses that I think have already have been permitted that have not actually been included um, in this this parking review. I think there's a business business called. Um, Brand 158 or something like that, that apparently is going to be, have to be using that parking structure because it's not going to have, of course, enough street parking either. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the Neon Light Museum that's going to be coming in, I think that's quite close to that, and they're going to need parking for that that's not included in your study of, how, of usage for the parking structure. So we got to make sure we control parking is at a premium in Glendale, and that has to be the, the major concern, that we make it convenient to use the library and... You've already permitted another business in there, and so forth. Um, I guess I have a light here that says I've spoken to too long enough, so I guess that's probably enough, isn't it? Okay. Okay, thanks. Say but thanks. concerned about parking. And we just had another um, speaker request. I see other people out in the audience who have not spoken. I have only have one more card. If anybody else would like to speak, speak will you please submit a card? Thanks. Um, Albert Avakarian. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to just address just uh, one or two points uh, real quickly. My name is Albert Upcare, and I'm, I'm the attorney for um, Ella Banquets. Um, the issue with, and I think that the issue that was raised in reference to, is, this, is there going to be a bar outside where they can just drink and do things? I think the condition basically says it has to be with food, first of all, and it, it's not just a bar area upstairs. It's actually part of the banquet hall facility. Uh, and it just adds to the banquet hall facility in reference to people going outside, smoking, doing other things. And I just wanted to address that issue. And the second issue, again, I just want to bring up that there was a parking agreement between the landlord and the city where the landlord contributed funds to the parking structure uh, based on the parking areas. And, and based on that, the structure was built with that agreement in place. So I just wanted to make sure that the uh, members of the public are aware of that as well. With that, I want to thank the staff for helping us out in this entire process. It was a lengthy process, but the staff was very helpful in providing uh, information, providing the code sections, and I just want to thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, last chance. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? No. Um, with that, I would like to call the applicant back for a rebuttal, um, Mr. Uh, Garo Nazarian. Thank you. I don't see need to rebuttal, but just I want to bring uh, something to your attention. I know uh, always one of the standard conditions of the CUP is that the plan presented on the hearing, you know, it you know it will be consistent what we are going to operate there. Maybe, you know, even that bar area that they brought it in the discussion, we are not sure that maybe we will put the bar or not. Just I want to have the option, minor changes, it's let's say if a 5% chance to deviate from this plan, not having the condition to come back. The, it won't be any new floor area or the wall added, the building, it, it is what it is. The use, use of the areas could be a little bit different than the what we presented here. I don't want to, to be a problem for us in the future. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anybody else wishing to speak? All right. With that, um, I will take this item under submission. And I will issue a decision in writing. And anybody who has submitted a card or provided their name and address at this meeting will receive a copy of that decision. And with that, I am closing the, the hearing. And we are now adjourned. <laughs>